So now we're looking at capacitors that are in series. Um, we're going to still deal with some of the same fundamental ideas. We're still going to talk about charge being stored, capacitance, um, and voltage. Excuse me, I just got a hiccup. Um, anyway, in order to determine what the capacitance, the total capacitance value, for a circuit that's in series, we need to first look at, we need to go back and look at what is going on in this circuit. So when I plug this circuit in, when I, when I connect this battery here to this circuit, what ends up happening is I start pushing electrons, okay? Those electrons end up getting pushed through the circuit. Now I have it set up kind of funny, actually I'm going to make a quick change, probably what that change is, but um, the symbol for capacitance and the symbol for our power supply, uh, at least the, the American symbol, I don't know if it's international, um, they look very similar because they are very similar. Um, capacitors are used as a power supply, as a source of energy, and most of our dry cell batteries, if you look at them, if you look at most batteries, not even dry cell, even, even your car batteries. The principle looks very similar to a capacitor. It's a series of plates, and you create a charge differential across them that generates electricity. So the symbols for both of them are almost identical. The difference is, is for a power supply, what we like to do is we like to make one, light, one wall, I guess, longer than the other. Okay, cool. The longer wall produces positive charge. So current comes out of that longer wall this way, okay? The reason why I flipped it is because we all know that electrons are what's moving, and they move in the opposite direction of the current. So the electrons are moving this way, okay? Cool? So what that does for me is allows me to say, okay, I have an incoming electron. The electron is deposited on my capacitor, which is some sort of conductor, so it's floating around on the surface of that capacitor. That electron creates an electric field and liberates another electron to move to this capacitor. Okay? So it leaves a hole here. So I've got one negative charge, one positive charge. Okay? And one negative charge. And then one positive charge. Cool? The system keeps on going. I add another electron. I liberate another electron. So I'm going to be looking at something like that. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. Okay? Now what ends up happening when I disconnect it, when I remove this potential, this potential difference, this, if you will, electrostatic pressure, is that these electrons no longer feel like they need to be held there. They're not being pushed there. So they start bailing back. And these, this group of capacitors here, cancel each other out. They don't uh, do anything for me. Okay? So, what I'm trying to get at is, is that the amount of charge stored here and the amount of charge stored here is identical, except for in, in charge or in positive or negative value. I mean, I've got positive here and negative here. But they're identical numbers. For every electron that's liberated here, it ends up getting deposited on this plate. Okay? So the total charge of the system, if we were to look at the system, is only the charge on this plate and the charge on this plate. So it's different than a parallel circuit. It's actually less efficient. Okay? Why would you do that? Well, it's a way in which you can say, well, I only have these capacitors and I need this capacitance value. I can put my capacitors in, in series and I can, I can be able to adjust the numbers to whatever I need them to be. Okay? Cool? So that's why you would do something like that. Now, to find the total capacitance, what do we have going on here? We have voltage. This voltage, this voltage, the voltage difference across them is equal to the total voltage in that battery. As a matter of fact, as the battery, as the capacitor is filled, we're going to end up getting the voltage here and the voltage here to be equal to the voltage here. Okay. 
So what I can say is that V1 is equal to V2 plus V3. Okay? Going back to this idea of capacitance, Q is equal to V over, or V times C. So V, you guys can see that, yeah. So V is equal to Q over C. Cool? So I end up getting, no, 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 that's not, yeah, I end up getting Q total over C plus Q1 over C plus Q2 over C. Okay, so looking at this, the charge here and the charge here are identical. They're equal to the total charge because of this idea here that this charge gets removed. I have, I have two negatives here, I got two positive here, two positives, two negatives. These fall out, I got two negatives, two positives. Total charge, two negatives, two positives, are equal to the charge here, two negatives, two positives. Charge here, two negatives, two positives. So those go away, and I'm left with my capacitances, one over my total capacitance is equal to one over capacitance of one plus one over capacitance of two. Okay? Seen this equation before, but we've seen it with resistivity and we've seen it with parallel circuits, not series circuits. Okay? So the capacitance total of a system that's in series is inverses are summative. 1 over the total capacitance is equal to the capacitance of 1 plus the capacitance of 2. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. So that's capacitance. That's capacitors in series, capacitors in parallel. 